guys welcome back so in my previous video i discussed the mcq questions which are given in the uh, rtp that is revision test paper for income tax law that is section a of paper 4 so in this video i would be discussing the descriptive type questions and the solutions for the same guys so we'll go ahead with the first co eight questions is actually the multiple choice question for which i have given the detailed explanation in my previous video let us continue with the ninth question now from the following particulars of income furnished by mr ashutosh aged 65 years pertaining to the year ended 31st march 2022 compute the total income for the assessment year 22 23 if he is resident and ordinary resident and non-resident so so please be careful with this with respect to this they have asked question on what section 5 guys section 5 that is scope of total income in case of ordinary resident global income is taxable irrespective of where the income is earned where it is received doesn't matter global income is taxable whereas for non-resident only the income which is earned in india or received in india is taxable clear yes shalom we'll go on with Capital gain on the sale of land in Jaipur. So, Jaipur is in India. So, the capital asset is in India to Mr. Ramesh, a non resident outside India. The consideration is also received outside India. Doesn't matter. Why? Because it is an asset in India. Capital asset is in India. So, income deemed to be earned in India or arise in India. So, it is taxable for both. Next, rent from property in Delhi. So, property again in Delhi. Let out to a branch of a foreign company, the rent agreement is entered outside India. Monthly rent is also received outside India. Doesn't matter. Where is the property? In Delhi. So, income is deemed to arise in India. So, even this 120 is fully taxable for both, in both the scenarios. Agriculture income from a land situated in Nepal, received in Nepal. So, this is a foreign income, so which is taxable only for ordinary resident. Next, interest on savings bank deposit in Yuko Bank, Delhi. So, is it an Indian income? Yes, taxable for both. But deduction is available for this. Savings bank deposit, a deduction is available under section 80 TTA or 80 TTB depending upon the age and residential status. Because 80 TTB is available only for senior citizen who is a resident, guys. Next. Income earned from a business in London, which is controlled from Delhi. So, control is from Delhi. 35,000 is received in India. Out of 60,000, 35,000 is received in India. So, 35 definitely taxable for both because it is received in India. Whereas, the remaining amount is taxable only for ordinary resident because it is an income from foreign country which is controlled from India. Agree? So, it is only tax full. Entire 60,000 will be taxable for ordinary resident. Whereas, for non-resident, only 35 which is received in india next gift received from his daughter who is a relative on his birthday 55000 so the value of gift is more than 50000 but it is from a daughter so the gift received from a relative is not taxable so 56 to 10 is not applicable here so not taxable in both the scenarios guys next so let me just write it so this past foreign taxed income brought to india so past foreign taxed income brought to india and so is it taxable in india no sir next fee for technical services rendered to shine limited a foreign company for business outside india and received also outside india so it is a, again foreign income but taxable only for ordinary resident it is taxable only for ordinary resident let us check it guys let me let me go to the solutions Computation of total income of Mr. Ashutosh under both the scenarios. So, one by one, side by side, it is taken. It's, it's, this is better, guys. So, don't do it separately. It will be time taking even in the exams. So, first item capital gain on the sale of land in Jaipur. It's fully taxable because the land is in Jaipur. Okay. Next, rent from a property. See, this is twisty R because 30% standard deduction has to be received, uh, deducted. Rent from a property in Delhi received outside India. So only rent they have given, not income from most property. So 1,20,000 is literally the rent. So from that standard deduction is always available. 
standard deduction as per section 24a is always available 30 percent of nav but your nav gav and all is not given so straight away take rent only as nav gav strand, reduce 30 percent from it okay so 84,000 taxable for both then agriculture income from land in nepal received in nepal so foreign income taxable only for ordinary resident then income earned from a business in london which is controlled from delhi entire amount is taxable for ordinary only 35 which is received in india is taxable then gift received from daughter not taxable since daughter is a relative next past foreign taxed income brought to india not taxable even if it is untaxed income also it is not taxable here see the twist they have given taxed income no problem it is not taxable even if untaxed income also is brought foreign income to india it is not taxable if it is related to past years then fee for technical services rendered to shine limited a foreign company from a business outside india and received also outside india so not an indian income it is taxable only for ordinary resident because for ordinary resident global income is taxable guys next i told you a deduction is available under section 80 tta or ttb for the savings so let us go to the question one and see what is the age of this assessee 65 years so can i tell is a senior citizen yes so which section is applicable there are two section guys let me explain it at tta at ttb at ttb will tta will tell interest on savings bank account up to maximum savings bank account up sorry account up to 10,000 deduction can be claimed by anyone. So no bifurcation between resident, not non-resident like that all is there. Whereas ATTTB will tell it is applicable only for resident senior citizen. Resident senior citizen and deduction can be claimed up to 50,000. On what? It can be on any deposit including FD. Including FD. So here there are two scenarios. So is he a senior citizen? Yes. But if he is an ordinary resident, he can claim deduction under section 80 TTP. But if he is a not ordinary resident, 80 TTP is not applicable. Why? Because he is not resident. So in that case, he can claim deduction under section 80 TTA, but maximum 10,000. And what is the amount of interest you can see here? Interest on savings bank is 18,000. Clear? So if he is an ordinary resident, he can claim full 18,000 deduction guys. Whereas if he is a non-resident, he can claim only 10,000. He can claim only 10,000. Under section 80 TTA. So that is what? So if he is an ordinary resident, he can claim deduction under section 80 TTB guys. So this deduction is under section 80 TTB. If he is a non-resident, he cannot claim deduction under section 80 TTB. It is not available for him. So he has to claim under section 80 TTA. And whenever you are reducing anything, Put it in bracket guys so total income of the SSE when he is ordinary resident and when he is a non-resident is 3,61,000 and 2,77,000 they are just asked total income stop it there don't do the tax calculations and all so your explanations also are also given guys so you guys can just go through it I have explained it yeah let us go to the next question 10th one <clears throat> Mr. Sunil is the CEO of Sheetal Textiles Limited. His basic salary is 6 lakh per month. Okay, this is actually on the um, uh, amendment which was previously there. Means not the new one which we already covered in our regular class. That is on perquisite calculation. Yeah, let me read this question. Mr. Sunil is the CEO of Sheetal Textile Limited. His basic salary is 6 lakh per month. He is paid 10-8% as DA okay so eight percent on what six lakh he contributes ten percent of his basic pay and da towards his recognized provident fund that is rpf and the company contributes the same amount so what is the amount of pf contribution six lakh plus da is how much eight percent plus eight percent so this is basic pay plus da into 10% of this is contributed by both employee as well as employer 10 10% okay 
the accumulated balance in the recognized provident fund on 1st april 2020 and 31st march 2021 and 31st march 2022 is 50 lakh 35000 and 94 lakh 57700 sir will it be increasing yes every year the contribution will be added to the balance plus interest will be getting accumulated guys interest will be getting accumulated on the balance compute the perquisite value chargeable to tax in the hands of mr sunil and a section 17 to 7 and 17 to 7 a for assessment year 21 22 that is last year and assessment year 22 23 that is current year yeah so they have asked the calculation for two let us do the both <clears throat> first for assessment year 21 22 section 17 to 7 will tell if if employer contribution to the recognized provident fund is more than 7 lakh 50 thousand in a year then that excess contribution would be taxable guys excess contribution will be taxable so in this question in assessment year 21 22 how much is contributed i showed the calculation where is it yes So it's coming now. So 6 lakh is the basic pay plus DA is 8%. On that 10% is contributed. Agree? So which comes to which comes to 7 lakh 77,600. So per year, the employer contribution is 7 lakh 77,600 per annum. Clear? Yeah. So into 12, you have to do whatever amount you get there into 12. Okay, that is nothing but okay. Let me show it here only. So 6 lakh plus 8% is the DA, 10% of this into 10%. And whatever amount you get into 12 months, because this is per month contribution into 12 months. So you will get 7 lakh 76,600. So how much is in excess of 7 lakh 50? 27,600. So it is taxable as perquisite in the hands of employee in the year previous year 20. 21 okay or assessment year 21 22 then 17 to 7 will tell 17 to 7 we have got 17 to 7 a will tell on this excess contribution 27600 what is the interest earned that will be taxable what is the income accrued on this excess contribution that will be taxable so 27600 which is taxable under section uh, 17 to 7 is principal amount Whereas 17 to 7 a is talking about the interest earned on that 27600. So perquisite value taxable under section 17 to 7 a annual accretion on perquisite taxable under section 17 to 7 which is the formula is given and you need to remember this formula guys. PC by 2. What is PC? Sheetal textile limited contribution in excess of 7.5 lakh to recognize provident fund. That is nothing but in simple I can tell whatever perquisite is taxable under section 17 to 7 guys so pc is that one divided by 2 okay then pc1 and tp1 is related to last year actually this provision came into picture from 1st april 20 guys so for previous year 2021 there is no pc1 tp1 okay because it started this provision itself came into picture from 1st april 2020 so there is no pc1 tp1 so you can see here they have taken it as nil then what is this r we need to calculate it is nothing but interest rate okay so for that again formula is given please pay attention first what is the formula i divided by f average so what is i interest earned during the year that is during 2021 what is the interest earned we need to check how to calculate it opening and closing balances are given okay take it rpf balance as on 31st march 2021 minus what is the employee and employer contribution both you deduct and minus the opening balance that is rpf balance on 1st april 2021 why so simple guys see at the beginning of the year what is the opening balance he had fine for this year employee contribution will be added plus employer contribution will be added plus interest 
current year interest will be added you will get what is the closing balance on 1st april or else 31st march so just a second you will get what is the balance on 31st march 21 closing balance agree so in our question we know opening balance, we know closing balance, we know employer and employee contribution. We don't know what is the interest earned. Can we do the reverse working and calculate what is the interest earned on this balances? Yes, sir. How? Take closing balances from that reduce. Employee contribution, employer contribution and opening balance. You will get what is the interest earned. You will get what is the interest earned. That is what we are calculating here. I is nothing but interest. Yeah. And how much is that? 5,56,500. In amount. In amount. So, this interest is earned on what? Balance. So, what is the average balance? Opening balance plus closing balance divided by 2 you take. So, average balance you need to calculate. Opening balance that is on 1st April 20. Closing balance on 31st March 21. All divided by 2. You will get so interest of 5,56,500 is, is earned on an average balance of 6,90,850. So can I calculate what is the interest rate? That is nothing but I by F average, which is nothing but R. Clear? So what is the interest rate you are getting? 0 0.0914. So that we are supposed to take it here. So the second part, the second part of this form formula will not be effective for previous year 21, 22, as I told you. So you need to take only the first part. So the perquisite which is taxable under section 17 to 7A is 1,261 guys. 1,261. Yeah, sure. So this is for previous year 2021 or assessment year 21, 22. So next same calculations has to be done for assessment year 22, 23 or previous year 21, 22 guys. Chalo. So 17 to 7 same answer because every year employer and employer call employer and employee contribution is same. So this will not change. Whereas 17 to 7 year calculation will change guys. So please pay attention please pay attention what is the formula pc by 2 pc is same amount 27600 whatever we have got here take it by 2 into r we are supposed to calculate r let us do it plus pc1 plus tp1 into r so what is pc1 what is pc2 sorry tp pc1 and tp1 pc1 is the amount of employer contribution in excess of 750000 to rpf in last year so, how much was contributed in excess of 750 last year? 27,600. Take it. So, PC1 and TP1 is always with respect to last year. They are past, I can take. Next, TP1. Taxable perquisite under section 17 to 7A for the previous year 2021. We calculated now how much? 1,261. We are supposed to take it. So, PC1 and TP1 is always with, is with respect to what? For me, for previous year 21 20 sorry previous year 2021 okay into r so this r we are supposed to calculate let me show it your similar calculation i is nothing but the interest first let me calculate it how is it closing balance minus employer contribution minus employee contribution minus opening balance so you are getting the amount of interest earned in previous year 21 22 is 7,55,800 and it is earned on what? Average balance, average fund balance. How much is it? 83,2200. How did we get it? Opening balance that is on 1st April 21, closing balance on 31st March 22 divided by 2, whole divided by 2. So the interest rate will be calculated here. That is nothing but amount of interest by average fund balance. You will get 0 0.0910 don't take the same rate whatever we have got in the last year the rate will not be same because the interest will always be calculated on cumulative balances so the for the first part you will get 1256 for the second part you will get 2626 so the total perquisite which is taxable under section 17 to 7a 
for the previous year 21 22 is 3882 guys 3882 yeah yes this is with respect to perquisite calculation note since the employees contribution to rpf exerts employee contribution also there is one amendment if employee contribution is more than 250000 then on that excess contribution whatever interest is earned is taxable but they have not asked that they have asked only whatever perquisite is taxable under section 17 to 7 and 17 to 7 a we have answered it but a note is given for it since the employees contribution of rpf exceeds 250000 in previous year 21 22 interest on the excess contribution that is 7,77,600 is the total contribution minus 2,50 you will get 5,27,600 5,27,600 is not taxable the interest on it will be taxable in the hands of the employee clear yeah. so this point also I have given it as a note in my material after the table which I have given for PF below that there is clear yeah. yes you can refer to it so 10th is done let us go to the 11th question 11th question is actually on slum say mr aditya is a proprietor of star stores having two units on first april 2021 so on 1st april 2021 he has transferred unit 2 which he has started on in 4 5 by way of lump sum slum sorry by way of slum sale for a total consideration of 18 lakhs for a total consideration of 18 lakh so what is slum sale guys when the entire undertaking is our unit has been sold without assigning the values for individual assets it is called slum sale and slum sale is covered under section 50 b of income tax act clear so in that case the asset or the undertaking itself will be means the undertaking itself will be the asset if the undertaking is held for more than 36 months it is long term asset if it is held for less than or equal to 36 months it is short term asset so here you can see this it was started a uh, unit 2 was started in 4 5 and it is sold in previous year 21 22 so is it held for more than 36 months yes sir so it is a long term so unit 2 is what long term capital asset so we need to compute what long term capital gain but in case of slum sale as per section 50b indexation will not be available why because cost of acquisition is nothing but the net worth of the unit which is sold as a slum sale on the date of transfer guys clear so no indexation benefit will be given so actual sale consideration is 18 lakhs the professional fees and broking brokerage paid for the transfer are 78,000. This balance sheet as on 31st March 21, that is before the sale, is as follows. Please see guys, before I start reading this, few points. In case of slum sale, what is the full value of sale consideration means? The fair market value. Fair market value. Clear? And they have given a clarification, the department has given a clarification by way of circular telling. How to calculate fair market value? It is the IR of two things. That is the fair market value of the asset transferred or the fair market value of the consideration which is received in any form whichever is higher whichever is higher and what is the cost of acquisition it is the net worth of the unit which is transferred on the date of transfer clear and for the calculation of net worth the revaluation has to be ignored if any asset is revalued we need to ignore that revaluation part clear we need to just take the book value of the assets guys Chalo. so on the asset side land furniture data patents are given for you separately for unit one and unit two then liabilities own capital revaluation reserve that is what i told you revaluation part we need to ignore bank loan see here they have given total bank loan total is 8 lakh 50 but 70 percent is unit one trade creditors 4 lakh 50 is the total but 20 percent for unit 2 so it is like 80 percent for unit 1 then unsecured loan 4 lakh 30 percent of it for unit 2 it's fine see one thing give that is bank loan they have given for unit 1 whereas this two they have given for unit 2 why because they want to confuse the students by doing this Shalom. other information 
Land of Unit 2 was purchased at 5 lakh in the year 2004 and revalued at 7 lakh 50 as on 31st March 2021. So 7 lakh is given. 7 lakh 50 is given. Should I take that? No. Revaluation has to be ignored. So while calculating net worth, I need to take 5 lakh only. Fine. So no individual value of any asset is considered in transfer deed. So fine. So that is why it is a slump sale as per section 50B. Then patents were acquired on 1st December 2019 on which no depreciation has been provided. Okay. It means we need to calculate the depreciation because any asset we need to take the book value while calculating the net worth. So if depreciation is not reduced, we need to reduce it. So for patents, what is the depreciation rate? Intangible asset 25% guys for every year then furniture and when is it was purchased for december 2019 so we need to consider that and all to provide either 100 percent or 50 percent of depreciation then furniture of unit 2 of 5 lakh were purchased on 1st december 2020 on which no depreciation has been provided again we need to provide depreciation at what percentage you 10 percent to calculate what is the book value fair market value of the capital asset transferred by way of slum sale of unit 2 is 18 lakh 10,000. So the fair market value of the capital asset transport is 18 lakh 10,000. And the consideration received is how much? 18 lakh, whichever is higher we are supposed to take, which is 18 lakh 10,000. So that will be the full value of sale consideration guys. Chalo. So explanation and all I have given it. So straight away we will go to the solution. Full value of consideration for a lump sum sale of unit 2. That is fair market value of the capital asset transferred by way of slum sale or fair market value of consideration received, whichever is IO. So the amount comes to 18,10,000. From this, expenses on transfer has to be reduced, which is 78,000. You will get net sale consideration 17,32,000. From this, you need to reduce cost of acquisition which is nothing but net worth it is calculated by way of working note or note so we will sh i will explain that you will get long term capital gain sir why long term capital gain i told you when the entire unit is sold we need to see how long the unit was held before the sale if it is for more, more than 36 months it is a long term asset guys chalo next computation of net worth is given here Book value of non-depreciable asset, land. Book value has to be taken, not the revalued figure. Please be careful. Debtors as it is, it is taken. Then, furniture and patents. We need to provide for depreciation. Patents, when it was purchased on 1st December 2020, 5 lakh. So, 1st December 2020 means, for previous year 2021, it was used for less than 180 days. Ah, yes, sir. So only 50% of the normal depreciation will be given. So this actually not, it is not for patents. It is actually for furniture. Yeah. There is a mistake here. Please correct it. So this is furniture. So furniture was purchased on 1st December 2020. So the rate of depreciation on furniture is 10%. But will we give full? No. 50% of normal depreciation. Why? Because the asset is used for less than 180 days. Then coming to patents patents was purchased on 1st december 2019 so for previous year 1920 how long it was used for less than 180 days for less than 180 days so you will get depreciation only 50 percent of 25 percent and patent is a intangible asset so depreciation rate is 25 percent so you will claim it for 1920 then wdb on first April 2020 is 6,34,375 from that again claim for full year 2021 25% depreciation which is 1,58,594 you will get WDV as on 1st April 2021 that is the date of transfer. So both the assets you can observe we have calculated the WDV as on 1st April 21 which is the date of transfer so take whatever we have got there. So you will calculate total value of assets from that current liabilities of unit 2, bank loan 30% of total, then trade creditors 20% of the total, unsecured loan is 30% of the total of unit 2. Let me just check whether they are taken correctly. Yes, 70% for unit 1 means 
30 percent for unit two correct so 20 percent 30 percent so 30 20 30 yes yes so total liabilities is 4 lakh 65 thousand you will get net worth of unit two on first april 21 that is on the date of transfer is 13 lakh 35 781 that is what we have received it deducted here clear so this is the slums long term capital gain on slum sale you can also mention the section if you are sure of the section it's always good to mention it guys in the answer it will impress the evaluator so done with this yeah. coming to next question 12th one yeah 12th one Mr. Sam Samrat and his wife, Ms. Komal, holds 12% voting power each. So, both of them are holding 12%, guys. So, totally 24%. In ABC Private Limited, Mr. Samrat and Ms. Komal are working in ABC Private Limited. That is where they are having substantial interest. Now, are this couple having substantial interest in the company? Yes. Both put together, they are having substantial interest. Yeah, that is husband and wife both put together 12% plus 12% more than 20% are, are they having substantial interest yes however miss komal is not qualified for the job so miss komal is unqualified from the following information given in respect of financial year 21 22 you are required to compute the gross total income of samrat and miss komal for assessment year 21 sorry 22 23 dividend of 22500 and 45000 is received so this is the key term sir why so because on dividend tds is deductible at 10 percent guys so here they have clearly given they have received 22500 and 45000 so it is always net amount so it is always net amount agree so when we are calculating the income what should we do we need to take gross amount so 22500 and 45000 is 90 percent of their dividend income actually because this amount is after deducting the tds clear if the amount of dividend is more than 5000 tds would be deducted at 10 percent by the company agree so they have received 22500 and 45000 means literally it is after tds guys so please be careful so the key term here is received by mr samrat and Ms. komal respectively from abc private limited Samrat has instructed the company to pay 50% of his dividend to Kajal, daughter of his deceased brother. Ah, see, Samrat has received 22,500 dividend and he has received literally 22,500 and 50% is given to Kajal. He has asked the company to transfer it to Kajal. So, is it 50% of 22,500 or 22,500 plus 22,500? It is 22500 plus 22500 guys. So please be careful. Sir, why? Simple. You can see received by Samrat is already 22500. He has received it. So it is what? Not 100%. It is only 50%. Remaining 50% is going to whom? Kajal. Yeah. So please be careful. So equivalent amount will go to Kajal. So even while calculating what is the dividend income of Kajal, we have to take care of what? The TDS part. Then salary earned by Samrat and Ms. Komal from ABC Private Limited is 8,50,000 and 5,50,000 respectively. Whereas for Komal, we need to apply section 64 once, guys. Why? Clubbing will be attracted because both of them are having substantial interest in the company. So Komal is not qualified person, but she is getting a salary from a company in which both of these people are having substantial interest, both put together. So, in that case, the salary income of Komal will be clubbed in the hands of Samrat, who is an husband. Business income earned by Samrat from his sole proprietary business is 15,60,000. Interest on FD earned by Ms. Komal, 9 lakh. Their son, Akash, aged 10 years minor, having PAN received interest of... Okay, let me just underline that. Received interest of 54,000 from bank on FD created by his grandfather in his name. So now Akash is a son. Is clubbing provision applicable? 
yes why because 64 1 a 64 1 a why so because akash is a minor he is not receiving or is not earning any income out of his efforts skill knowledge expertise guys he is earning fd interest so in that case clubbing will be attracted under section 64 1 a and whenever clubbing attracts under section 64 1 a exemption is also available under section 1032 please be careful with it just a second i will mention it so exemption is also available under section 1032 amounting to 1500 maximum yeah sure let us go and do the calculations computation of gross total income of samrat and komal they have just asked the income calculation so we'll stop it there only so what is the salary of samrat 8 lakh 50 and they are clearly given it is not income from salary they are clearly given salary earned so obviously standard deduction is not provided so please provide for standard deduction guys standard deduction under section 16 1a 50000 so what is the income from salary 8 lakh for samrat then salary of komal again she is also earned 5 lakh 50 standard deduction 50000 5 lakh will it be taxable for komal no you can see here samrat why under section 641 actually clubbing is attracted but clubbing should always happen under section income from other sources guys but here in this question they have not done it in the advice they have just calculated the gross total income but i suggest you to show the clubbing under ifos okay because whenever gross total income or total income calculation is asked it's always suggested to do in the advice order so here you write salary of samrat whereas clubbing you do it but under ifos at the end yeah so for uh, note in the bracket they have also given the explanation why clubbing is attracted then samrat is also having a business income add it then dividend income guys please be careful with it dividend income from abc private limited taxable in the hands of samrat as per section 60 since he transferred the income that is dividend without transfer the asset so that anjali anjali you know kajal sorry kajal whatever she is receiving that also should be clubbed in the hands of Mr. Samrat only. As per section 60, clubbing will be attracted. Okay, what is the amount of actually dividend earned? 22,500 with Samrat received, which is after TDS. So divide it by 90%. Why so? Because TDS is 10%. So what he has received is only 90% of what he has earned. Into 2. Sir, why into 2? Because half is given to Kajal, na? Okay, so that also should be taxable in the hands of Mr. Samrat. Very important. And coming to wife, that is, what is the name of the wife? That is Komal. How much is our dividend income? 45,000 is the net amount divided by 90%. Divided by 90%, you will get 50,000. Next, interest on FD earned by Mr. Mrs. Komal. It will be taxable in her hands only. She is not a minor. Then total income before including minor's income, whose income is more? Father's. So minor children's income will always be clubbed in the hands of father or mother, whoever is having higher income. So who is having higher income? Father, that is husband, Samrat. So the <clears throat> interest income, what is the interest income? Received interest. So here also you can see received interest. So that means after TDS. So this is net amount. So what is the TDS rate applicable for interest? Same, 10%. 10%. So in that case, we need to take gross amount. That is 54,000 divided by 90%, guys. Clear? Yes, same way here also. Means only net figures are given. Received means net figure. So we need to take the gross figure while calculating the income. But from this 60,000, exemption is available under section 1032. Maximum 1,500 per minor child. So reduce it. So remaining 58500 is clubbed in the hands of Samrat. Section is not mentioned. So better to mention section 641A. Clear guys? This is the solution for this problem. Question number 11 I guess.
11 or 12 11 sorry 12 yeah now going to the next question next question i think it's on total income again in the exam also definitely there will be one total income calculation at least one they can ask more than one also but at least one will be there mr rajesh a resident individual furnished the following information in respect of income and loss earned by him for the financial year 21 22 okay they have given some details income from salary already computed with all should we reduce standard deduction no sir because only if salary earned or salary received is given we need to provide for standard deduction but your already computed figure is given guys fine long term capital loss on the sale of shares of reliance limited stt has been paid both at the time of acquisition and sale long term loss if it is if there is any can be adjusted only against long term gain guys we know that and that too within 8 years next loss from let out property in delhi 75000 interest on self acquired acquired property in mumbai which is 50000 again it can also be claimed as a loss winnings from lottery tickets 40000 which is a casual income cost of acquisition of lottery ticket you cannot reduce it so because against casual income you cannot claim any expenditure guys 10000 against casual income actually you cannot claim any deductions also you cannot claim any expenditure also next profit and gains from manufacturing business after deducting normal depreciation 10000 and additional depreciation 4000 okay 96000 long term capital gains on the sale of house property is 140 ah long term gain is there so can i adjust this loss yes the other details of brought forward losses and unabsorbed depreciation pertaining to assessment year 21 22 that is last year are brought forward business loss from manufacturing business 35000 and whenever any loss is brought forward or carry forward it can be adjusted only against the same rate guys it cannot be adjusted against other rate unabsorbed normal depreciation is there 10000 brought forward loss from activity of owning and maintaining resource 50000 if any loss is from activity of owning and maintaining resource you can adjust that loss only against the same income okay that too within four years fine next compute the gross total income of mr rajesh for the assessment year 22 23 and amount of loss if any that can be carried forward if he wants to opt for provision 115 bac for the first time that means you want to go for a new scheme guys so if he is going for a new scheme certain restrictions are there certain deductions are not allowed certain deductions are not allowed we need to take care of it and calculate gross total income yeah sure 13th problem income from salary so no standard deduction and all is provided because it is a computed figure then loss under the head see if there is income from house property and loss current year loss from house property i can adjust the house property loss against salary income but if you are opting for a new scheme current year house property loss cannot be adjusted against other rates guys that is the restrictions under the new scheme so less loss under the head income from house property in the bracket they have given loss from house property is not allowed to be set off with any other head of income since mr rajesh is opting for section 115 bac sir what if the rajesh is opting for old scheme in that case he can adjust house pro current year house property loss he can adjust it against the income from salary guys but maximum 2 lakh then house property self-occupied property interest under section 24b is not allowed for self-occupied property interest deduction under section 24b maximum for self-occupied property 2 lakh or 30,000 is allowed now but if the assessee is opting for a new scheme that is not allowed again blocked fine then loss from lettered property carry forward to assessment year 23-24 so whatever brought forward loss is there we are carry forwarding it to next year that is why it is given only in the inner column not in the outer column because it, it cannot be set off because if there is any brought forward house property loss it can be set off only against the current year house property income fine next profits and gains of business is 96000 but it is after claiming you can see here they have given in the question it is after claiming normal depreciation 10000 and additional depreciation 4000 but if the assess is opting for a new scheme 
additional depreciation is not allowed guys so 96000 is after claiming the additional depreciation so what should we do add it back so after claiming depreciation profit has come down so add it and increase <clears throat> So add 4,000 you, you'll get 1 lakh and profit forward loss from manufacturing business is there which is given at the bottom 35,000 adjust it then unobserved normal depreciation is there if it is unobserved additional depreciation you cannot adjust it it is normal depreciation claim it or reduce it unobserved depreciation can be adjusted against any income except salary or casual income then Come into capital gains there is a long term capital gain on sale of house property 1 lakh 40 and there is a long term capital loss of 1 lakh 15,000 can i adjust it yes long term loss can only be adjusted against long term gain i can adjust the remaining 25 is taken up to the outer column then winnings from lottery ticket 40,000 is there sir can i adjust the expenses no i told you no expenses can be adjusted so straight away entire gross income will be taxable uh, that to at what rate Hope you remember it the rate for casual income is 30 percent under section 115 bb so no expenses even no losses can be adjusted against it so the gross total income of the assessee is 4 lakh 60 thousand guys so they have not asked total income or they have not asked tax liability so please stop it here only <coughs> next losses to be carried forward for the next year is <coughs> Loss from let out property in Delhi, then loss from activity of owning and maintaining resources. Both of this couldn't be adjusted. So I will carry forward it to next year, guys. So two notes also are given with respect to whatever I told. You can go through it. Then we'll go to the next question. 14th one. Fourteenth question. Mr. Rishabh, a resident individual aged 54 years. Okay, 54 resident. Okay, let might be important for us. He is engaged in the business of manufacturing clothes. He earned profit of 82,45,000 as per profit and loss account after debiting and crediting the following items. Okay, please pay attention guys. This is a bit lengthy question. Depreciation lack, depreciation 15,40,000. Short term capital gain on the transfer of listed equity shares in the company on which STD is paid 10 lakh. So it is not a business income. So we need to remove it. It will be taxable under capital gains head. Then he received income tax refund 15 lakh 15,550 which includes interest on refund of 4,550. So this is not a business income again remove it. But only interest would be taxable under IFOS guys. Interest would be taxable under IFOS and your capital gains. 10 lakh next dividend income from indian company again it is not any business income deduct it where it will be taxable under ifos it will be taxable under ifos yeah and income tax refund please be very very careful the amount credited to p and l account is 15550 deduct entire amount while calculating business income but how much will be taxable as ifos only 4550 that is only interest part Okay, next. Additional information. Mr. Rishabh installed a new plant and machinery for 65 lakhs on 1st October 2021, which was put to use on 1st January 22. So from when depreciation can be claimed, guys? From 1st January. That is the date on which the asset is put to use. Because machinery and all need to be installed. So put to use means when it will be ready to use. Purchase is made on 1st October. But when it is put to use 1st january so depreciation will be available from when 1st january so please be careful because it is used for less than 180 days in previous year 21 22 okay that is the key point here and cost is 65 lakhs okay next depreciation including depreciation additional depreciation on this amount of 65 lakh is included in the depreciation debited to profit and loss account which has been computed as per income tax rules okay whatever figure you are given now nah, it is as per income tax rule it seems so fine we are fine with it mr rishabh took a loan from sbi of 50 lakh on 15th september 2021 at 10.5 percent per annum to purchase such, such plant and machinery 
total interest up to 31st March 2022 has been paid on 31st March 2022 and the same has been debited to profit and loss account. No. Why? Because this loan is taken to purchase an asset. So, a interest which is paid up to the asset date on which the asset is put to use. That is from 15th September 21 till 1st January 22. Whatever interest is paid on the loan, no guys, it has to be capitalized. And it has to be added to what? 65 lakh cost. Yeah. So, on this rule is given where? So, 50 lakh into 10.5% into how many months? October, November, December plus 15 days of September. So, it is 3.5 months. So, 3.5 by 12. Whatever amount you will get, it has to be capitalized. As per which section? 43.1 which talks about actual cost. 43.1 talks about actual cost where it tells interest on the loan taken to purchase the asset up to the date the asset is put to use has to be capitalized. Sir, what about the interest which is paid after 1st January? It will be revenue. It can be debited to PNL account. So, whatever interest you get here should be added for 65 lakh guys, which is the cost. Clear? So, on this total figure, we will claim depreciation actually. But here they are told only on 65 lakh depreciation is calculated. So, on this interest part which is capitalized, we need to add depreciation. Okay, next advance tax paid during the year 17 lakh 50,000. Rishabh purchased goods for 40 lakh from Mr. Ram, his brother. The market value of the goods is 35 lakh. Rishabh purchased the goods for 40 lakh from Mr. Ram, his brother. The market value of the goods is 35 lakh. So that means 40A2 is applicable here. That is unreasonable payment is made to a related party. How much? 5 lakh. So disallow it. 5 lakh is disallowed. Next. He paid 40,000 as life insurance premium taken on the life of his married daughter who is not dependent on him. The sum assured is 5 lakh and the policy was taken on 1st April 2016. So if the policy is taken on 1st April 2016, the limit applicable is 10%. So what is the sum assured? 5 lakh. So 10% of 5 lakh is 50,000. So what is the premium paid? 40,000. So it is within the 10%. Can he claim the deduction under section 80C? Yes. But, sir, it is paid for a, a married daughter who is not dependent on him. Doesn't matter. ATC doesn't put any condition that the children should be dependent on the parent to claim the life insurance premium deduction. Nothing like that. Clear? Yeah. Yes. Next. He paid 5,000 by check towards health insurance policy covering himself, his spouse and his children. So, this deduction can be claimed under section 80D. But ATD will tell there are two categories here. For SSC, spouse and children, maximum 25,000. For parents, maximum 25,000. So here, even though he has paid 45,000, maximum 25,000 deduction is allowed, guys. And he is not a senior citizen. None of them are senior citizen. So maximum deduction is 25 only. On 1st July 2021, Mr. Rashab withdraw 1.5 crore in cash from three current accounts maintained by him with HSBC. There are no other withdrawals during the year. He regularly files his return of income. So your section 194N TDS is applicable guys on this transaction. He is withdrawing 1.5 crore that is more than 1.1 crore. So he is withdrawing more than 1 crore how much 50 lakh on that 50 lakh TDS will be deducted by the bank by the bank. As per section 194 N. Papa, too many points. Finally, we have come to an end. You are required to compute the total income and tax payable. Oh, both they are cast. By Mr. Rishabh for assessment year 22-23 in the manner so that he can take maximum tax savings. What are they trying to ask? They are trying to ask to do both the things that is old scheme new schemes guys they want you to suggest which scheme is better so you need to do the working under both the scheme check what is the tax liability under both the scheme wherever it is minimum you suggest that is better 
clear so they are asking you to suggest which is where you can save maximum tax savings so it is simple that they are indirectly asking you to do the working under both old scheme and new scheme calculate the tax liability whichever is less you suggest that you suggest that one clear sure so this is a bit lengthy on solution please be attentive guys come on look here <clears throat> focus computation of total income of mr rishabh for assessment year 22 23 under regular provisions of the act that is old scheme income from business or profession 82 45 whatever is given for that interest on loan taken from purchase of plant and machinery which is actually debited to pnl account so the interest paid from the date of loan that is i think 15 september till 1st june has to be capitalized so interest from the date on which capital was borrowed till the date on which the asset was put first put to use not allowed as deduction why because it is capitalized under section 3613 so it is not allowed as revenue expenditure so how much is that 50 lakh into 10.5 percent into 3.5 by 12 already entire amount is debited to pnl account entire interest but the capital part we need to add back clear so 1 lakh 53125 is the interest which is paid between 1st 15th september till 31st december which we need to capitalize and add it to the cost of the asset so we are adding it back as it was debited already to pnl account next purchase of goods at a price higher than the fair market value so here 482 is applicable add back any excessive payment or unreasonable payment to made made to related party so only that excess part will be added back okay then deduction items income tax refund including interest you need to reduce it already it is credited then dividend income also reduce it short term capital gain whatever is already credited reduce it why so because this three are not a business income it is not a business income it is taxable under other rates okay next depreciation on interest part agree depreciation is calculated as per income tax rules only on 65 lakh whereas this interest is there now which has to be capitalized as per 43 1 this has to be capitalized so on this also depreciation can be claimed which is missed by the assessee so we need to calculate normal depreciation <coughs> on what is the amount 1,53,125 into 15% into 50% why because the asset is put to use on 1st January 22 less than 180 days so that is why 50-50% additional depreciation is also allowed at 20% but 50% of it so calculate both and deduct it guys and deduct it clear Chalo. you will get what is the total PGBP income 63 lakh 55778 so your important thing is this interest part guys yeah yeah next capital gains 10 lakh is taxable here then two income that is only interest only interest on income tax refund plus dividend income is taxable here you will get gross total income any deduction is available yes adc the life insurance premium for a married daughter even though she is not dependent still deduction is available and the premium paid is less than 10 percent of the sum assured so full deduction is allowed 40,000. then deduction under section 80d i told you even though the premium paid is more maximum deduction allowed for assessee spouse and children is 25,000. clear so total deduction is 65,000. reduce it you will get total income 87 lakh 95,328 and total income should always be rounded off to the nearest to 10 rupees under section 288a 288a our answer will not end here they have asked us to calculate tax also tax on total income 87 lakh 95 first check whenever you are calculating tax liability first check whether any special income is there yes sir short term capital gain 10 lakh under section 111 a is there what is the rate 15 percent calculate what is the normal income or balance income? 77 lakh 95,330. How did you get this? Total income minus special income, which is 10 lakh. 
okay so on this slab rate is applicable what is the slab rate up to 250 so the age of the individual is less than 60 so normal slab rates normal basic exemption limit up to 250 nil 250 to 5 lakh 5 percent so 2 lakh 15 to 5 percent 12,500 then 5 lakh to 10 lakh it is 20 percent so the difference is 5 lakh 5 lakh into 20 percent 1 lakh then from 10 lakh to 77 lakh 95,330 it is 30% so on the difference of 67 lakh 95,330 you need to apply 30% clear sir is surcharge applicable yes why because if the individual is having a total income more than 50 lakh but less than 1 crore surcharge would be applicable at 10% guys so whatever gross tax you have calculated on that apply 10% so 23 lakh 1000 into 10% next health and education on how much on this figure health and education says four percent on this figure will be added so you will get total tax liability 26 lakh 32,457 then tds under section 194 n i told you the assessor has withdrawn 1.5 crore from the bank so if he has withdrawn more than one crore so section 194 n will be applicable the bank will deduct tds under section 194 n at what rate two percent on how much only the amount exceeding 1 crore. So 1.5 crore he has withdrawn totally. So 1.5 crore minus 1 crore. What is the excess amount? 50 lakh. So on 50 lakh, 2% TDS would be deducted under section 194 N guys. So how much is that? 1 lakh. And is it included while income calculation? No, because when you are withdrawing the amount from your bank, it is not your income. So it is not a TDS which is deducted on your income. Please be careful. Only this section actually is doing like that normally all other tds section tds is deducted on what on your income whereas this 194 n is on withdrawal from the bank account clear yes so we need to reduce it because it is a tds payment which is already made to the government indirectly then advanced tax paid we need to reduce it you will get what is the final amount of tax we need to pay to the government after reducing this to 7 lakh 82457 this has to be rounded off under section 288b that is final tax amount should always be rounded off to the nearest 10 rupees as per section 288b clear guys so this is our first part that is old scheme now coming to new scheme under section 115 bac computation of total income of mr rishabh as per section 115 bac for assessment year 22-23 gross total income whatever we have got we will take it as it is there won't be any change plus additional depreciation whatever additional depreciation is allowed now that is not given if the individual has opted for a new scheme and also whatever deductions are there under chapter 6a except ATJJWA, no other deduction is allowed so we need to add back all this means deductions are not allowed so anyway we are taken only gross total income we are adding back only the additional depreciation guys so on interest part how much whatever we have calculated here where is it yeah this amount 15313 because additional depreciation is not allowed for a individual who has opted for a new scheme next on 65 lakh also additional depreciation is claimed huh? it is given in uh, whatever depreciation is given in the point a is as per the income tax rules so on 65 lakh which is original cost 20% additional depreciation rate into 50%. Why into 50%? Because the asset was used for less than 180 days. So add back both, you will get 95,25,641. This is the gross total income or total income as per new scheme. Why? Because deductions under chapter 6a is not allowed for a assessee who has opted for a new scheme, guys. Except ATJJWA. But here ATJJWA is not given. So here also total income rounded off under section 288 a so next apply the new tax rates under new scheme actually the tax rates are kept lower whereas various exemptions and deductions have been blocked is not allowed so here also there is a special income so calculate tax on special income first then on the balance income how do you get balance income 95 lakh 25640 minus 10 lakh 
you'll get balance balance income or normal income 85 lakh 25640 on this apply slab rates so slab rate would be like this up to 2 lakh 55% sorry nil that is basic exemption limit from 2 lakh 50 to 5 lakh 5% after that for every 2 lakh 50000 increase in total income tax rate will increase by 5% up to 15 lakh up to 15 lakh so calculate accordingly the tax rate as per the slab rates then is surcharge applicable yes the surcharge rate is same even under the new scheme the total income of the individual is more than 50 lakh so surcharge is calculated at 10 percent on gross tax amount then gross tax amount plus surcharge you need to add and calculate health and education says at four percent on that total tax liability you will get then from that you reduce the tds amounts and advanced tax amount you will get what is the final tax payable and even that has to be rounded off to the nearest to 10 rupees as per section 288b guys 288b so now you give your final conclusion under which option the total tax liability is less here 9,47,300 under first option under first option it is 7,82,460 so which is better 7 lakh 82 460 means the lower the tax liability it's better to the assessee so which one are you suggesting to the assessee 7 lakh 82 460 because you can save you can save maximum tax under the old scheme that is what the conclusion given here since the tax liability as per section 115 bsc is higher than the tax computed as per the normal provisions of income tax act 1961 it is beneficial for mr rishab not to exercise option that is not to opt, opt for new scheme in such a case the tax payable by him would be 7 lakh 82 460 as per the regular provisions of the act guys clear you can also when you are doing this working you can do this two working as option a option b under the end uh, recommend option a yeah this all about question 14 then coming to the last question of our descriptive type 15th one miss shivani is a u.s citizen she got married to mr shiram an indian citizen and a resident of india in the year 2015 since then she has been staying in india since then since 2015 she is in india she is a bank she has a bank account in us so first of all is she a resident in india yes because she is in India from 2015. So obviously complete year she is in India. So she will be a resident. Okay. She has a bank account in US citizens. Okay. She sold a residential house in US. Okay. She had also had an house in US. And earned a long term capital gain 2 lakh. She invested the wholesale consideration in capital gains bonds under section 54 EC so that no long term capital gains is taxable she does not have any source of income in india during the previous year 21 22 is she required to furnish a return of income if s yes, can she furnish a belated return so first question is should he file the return should she file the return so we need to refer to section 139 of income tax an individual whose total income without giving effect to inter alia section 54 ec exceeds base maximum amount not chargeable to tax means basic essential limit 2,50,000 is required to file return of income on or before the due date under section 139.1 which is 31st July for individual normally 31st July if they are subject to if their books of accounts is subject to audit and all then it is different but normal situation 31st July so every person being a resident other than not ordinary resident so is she covered here? No. Why? Because her income before claiming 54 EC exemption is not more than 2,50,000. Because it is only 2 lakh. It is only 2 lakh. Clear? Yes, sir. She is not covered in this provision. Let us go to the next one. Every person being a resident other than not ordinary resident in India, means ordinary resident, would be required to file a return of income or loss for the previous year even if his total income does not exceed the basic essential limit if such person at any time during the previous year inter alia inter alia means one of the condition 
holds any asset located outside India or has signing authority in any account located outside India. So is she covered here? Yes, sir. This is a proviso for section 139.1. So is she covered here? Yes. So in that case, irrespective of her income, she, she has to file the return. She has to file the return. <clears throat> so in my regular class, I have put a chart and explained here. So one of the point here, there was this one. So she is covered here. Ordinary resident she is and she is having an asset outside India and also signing authority. So she is covered in this point. In this case, Ms. Shivani is a resident and ordinary resident in India for assessment year 22-23 because she is living entirely in India after 2015. Since she has been staying in India since the year 2015, the total income of Shivani without giving effect to inter alia section 54 EC is 2 lakhs which is below the basic agency limit so she is not covered there. However, she since she has a bank account in US, she has to furnish a return of income for assessment year 22-23 on or before 31st July of assessment year guys. So can she file belated return is asked. Yes. Yes, she can furnish a belated return as per section 139.4. If she has not furnished a return on or before 31st July 2022, that is of assessment year, at any time before, that is belated return should be filed before the earlier of two dates. Three months prior to the end of relevant assessment year, that is for previous year 21-22, assessment year is 22-23. So when will the assessment year end? 31st March 23. So they are telling 3 months before it. So 31st December 22 guys. Yeah. So 3 months prior to the end of relevant assessment year means 31st December 22 for our previous year. Or completion of assessment whichever is earlier. She has to file the belated return within the time. Yeah. Shalom guys. So this is all about the revision test paper of income tax law guys so i have covered each and everything and wherever required i have also explained the provisions guys hope it was helpful for you and for your preparations so do prepare well for your exams and do pass with very good marks guys all the very best for your exams and future see you soon as a professionals guys thank you